Hello everyone and welcome to Global Consilient Research. This is the English playlist for fundamental analysis and we are at session number three. And in this session, we are going to start off with a financial statement analysis. And the first statement that we are going to pick is the income statement, which is also known as your profit and loss count. Now, as you already know, if you have already taken my courses, if you have already one of my students, if you are a subscriber of our channel, then you know that I do not teach from the PPTs and other theoretical stuff or PDFs, right? So I just simply take you to the actual income statement and we'll actually teach you how to analyze an income statement like a professional analyst. So if you are new to our channel, then I highly recommend you to please hit that subscribe button because GCR is a one-stop solution for all things finance. So let's go to a company known as your V2 Retail. Now, if you are an Hindi audience, then please, uh, and you are not comfortable in English, then this is not the session you should be looking. We have a separate playlist for Hindi audience and this is for English audience only because the GCR is actually global. Right, so let's start off with the income statement analysis and see what it tells us. First of all, I'll simply go to the retail or uh, go to the screener section and click on the or type in any company. I can type in, let's say, DMART. I can type in revenue supermarkets. I can type any company, right? So for this exercise, I'll be taking the example of a company called V2 Retail. Now, what V2 Retail does, it's a value retail player. It simply sells retail products to you and I, which are quite economical in nature, right? They are simply present in tier two and tier three cities. They do not have a presence in the tier three cities. So I'll simply click on the section called as profit and loss, right? So profit and loss, loss. as the name suggests, profit and loss, income statement. Income statement in essence tells me how much income I have generated over a period of time, right? And whether after deducting all the operating expenses, all the financial expenses, all the capital expenses and all sorts of expenses, whether I have made a profit or loss. This is the main task of an income statement. Now, when we dive deep into the income statement, obviously there are certain things which you need to be wary of, which you need to be carefully looking for, right? But the essence is simply clear. It simply tells me whether I have made a profit or not and where the profit is coming from and where the expenses are going. So the first line item on an income statement is called as your sales. Now, this sales is also known as your top line. Now, if you are a professional equity research analyst or you are a, you are just starting off an equity research, you will always hear one single term in every call call and in every PPT. It's the top line, top line growth. How did the top line grow in the quarter one, in this exact quarter, all these quarters, right? You will always hear these statements, top line, bottom line, right? So top line is the main thing which you need to look for in the income statement, how the top line is growing over a period of time. Now, be very mindful of this word, of this sentence over a period of time, that income statement is only measured over a period of time. It's not that key, how the income statement is looking today. It's always from point X to point Z, point A to point B. It's like a flow statement. It does not, it's not a static statement, right? Like a balance sheet. It's not a static statement. It's, it tells me how much money I have made over a period of time. Now, if you look at the, from March 2025, from March 2021 to March 2025, look at the, how the sales have grown for V2 retail. Now, this is called as your top line growth, how the sales are growing over a period of time, right? And this is the number one thing which you need to be focused on. If the top line is not growing, my friends, trust me, the company is not doing well. You can creep about ESG, you can creep about management quality. See, if management quality is so great, then why top line is not growing? This is the first thing you need to look for in any income statement. I don't care whether you are analyzing a bank, whether you are analyzing a retail player, you are analyzing an IT company. Now, look at this. Now, we can all see that the top line growth is just phenomenal in the case of V2 retail and it continues to grow, right? Whereas, whereas if I show you another company, right, I'll just show you another company whose top line is almost stagnant in the same sector, it's your trend limited. Now look at the quarterly results, right? I'll show you one case study. Look at the quarterly result from the June 2024 to June 2025. Now, from June 2024 to June 2025, over a period of five quarters, look at how the top line has almost flat line. 4,104, 4,157, 4,657, 4,217, 4,883. Now, this is not something which I want. Now, the pace of growth. Now, here is another thing which you need to be very mindful of. It's the pace of the top line growth. It's the pace of the sales growth 
which you need to be keep in mind always. Whenever you look at an income statement, the first thing you look for is the how the sales have been going over a period of time and how the pace is. Now, what is pace? I'll show you the pace, right? I want my company to consistently deliver YOY. That is this quarter, this year's quarter to last year quarter, this year quarter to last year quarter, this year's quarter to the last year quarter. I want the YOY sales growth to be very phenomenal. March to March and December to December, right? Let me just delete it, right? So when I'm comparing the June 2024 result, I need to compare June 2025 results because this is YOY, right? And this is QOQ, quarter on quarter, and this is YOY. This is how you analyze. So when I'm talking about the YOY analysis, I want the pace of growth to at least stay the similar path. Or in the best case scenario, I want this pace of growth to be higher than the previous year. Now, if you look at it, if you look at it closely, right, just pay close attention to the pace of sales growth. Why am I sales growth? Please pay, pay close attention to it. From the period of September 2023, company's pace of sales growth was like 60, 53, 64, 45, 52, 50. And from then on, it reached almost 56%. Then from June 2024, from this quarter, the pace of growth is coming down. This is a concerning thing for any company, right? You want the pace of growth to be consistently stable or at least growing for a small firm. But it also depends on the company, on the industry or company operates in, right? So this is the first thing. Now, when we look at an income statement, right? Whenever we look at the income statement, there is an income and then there are expenses. Now, what are those expenses? Let's see. You have your material cost, employee cost, right? Now, what are material? I'll just show you a different income statement. I'll go to the Tijori Finance, right? I'll simply click on Financials and I'll click on Profit and Loss. It will take me to the Profit and Loss. Now, look at all the operating expenses that there are in a company, right? How many operating expenses are there? First of all, there is your raw material expense, right? Simply say, it simply means that to produce the goods and services, we need the raw material. Now, let's say if I'm producing clothes, what do I need? I need fabric, right? Right. I need some, first of all, this is the fabric, threads, right? Labels, right? This can be my raw material. If I'm producing, let's say, biscuits, biscuits, right? So I want to understand how the raw material prices have been going for the company and to see how this affects the gross margin. Now, when we talk about gross margin relation analysis, I need to conduct a separate session for that. So please be patient with this course, right? So raw material has been consistently going up for the company because sales are, because gross material, oh, sorry, raw material costs are variable. It goes up as the production goes up. Then there is a material cost as a percent. So you can see that the gross margins are close to around 30 to 35% because 65% of the sales goes towards your raw material suppliers. Then we have employee cost, we have power and fuel cost, and all of these combined are your called operating profit. Oh, sorry. All of these combined are called as operating expenses. Here it is, operating expenses, right? And when we deduct operating expenses from sales, we get operating profit. Now, operating profits are simple. Say, these are your, like, all the expenses related to operational side of the business. This is not related to the capital structure. This is not debt financing uh, cost. And this is certainly not your amortization EBITDA, right? Depreciation amortization, this is not, right? These are all the expenses related to the operating side of your business. Operating side of your business, right? So you need to understand there are three kinds of expenses. One is your operating expenses. One is your capital exp expenses. And the last and not the least is your capex, right? where you are going, right? Financial expenses, right? So you need to understand the types of expenses are there. These are your operating expenses. They do not create much value, but they keep the margins, right? You need to see how the operating margins are. Now, when I divide operating profit by sales, I get the operating margin, but that is a topic we will talk later on, right? We have your other income and then your operating profit margin. Look at how the operating profit margin has been for the v 2 details for the entire financial years from March 2023 to 25. Operating profit margin has gone up from 10% to 13.78%. Right? 
right? This is something which I want to see, right? Then we have depreciation, amortization expenses. These are simply your fixed asset costs, fixed assets costs spread out over the years. And if you do not understand depreciation, then I highly suggest, please watch my equity research car playlist and you will find it. We have your interest expenses. This is your financial expense. Then comes your profit before tax. When we deduct depreciation and amortized interest from the operating profit, you get profit before tax. But there is one more term which I want to explain and that is your EBITDA, right? EBITDA simply means earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. Now, what is EBITDA? EBITDA is simply a non-GAAP measure, non-generally accepted accounting principle. You won't find this term EBITDA in any of the accounting books around the world. But when it comes to equity research, when it comes to fundamental analysis, we still use the term EBITDA. Why? So that we can compare the profitability and margins across sectors, right? This is something which analysts always do. Now, EBITDA simply means earnings before deducting interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. It simply means your operational excellence. Higher the EBITDA margin, higher the operational expenses, or sorry, operational excellence, right? How do we calculate the EBITDA from this income statement? Take profit before tax, add interest, add depreciation. You get the EBITDA. Profit before interest, depreciation, amortization, and taxes. This is your EBITDA. Higher the EBITDA margin, higher the company's operational excellence, and easier it is to compare across the firms because we are removing the effect of capital structure, we are removing the effect of taxes, and we are removing the effect of asset heaviness. The higher the EBITDA margin for a company, the better it is, right? But EBITDA margins also depend on the industry or companies. Let's say there are five companies in industry and there is a sixth incumbent, which is a smaller player. Now, all those five larger players play around 40 to 15% EBITDA margins. Now, that sixth company can only aspire to have only 40 to 15% because once that company achieves a certain level of scale, it is highly improbable and implausible to seek a that they can cross the 14 to 15 percent EBITDA margin. So you need to understand how the industry is structured, what are the target margins, how high the margins can go, and when the margins are peaking. So this is something which you need to be very careful about when understanding the income statement. Then comes your taxes, and when we deduct taxes, we are paying our share to the government. Then comes your net profit. Then comes your net profit, and when we divide the number of share net profit by number of share, we get the EPS. Now, folks, this is a basic analysis of an income stream, right? This is simply a basic analysis. Now, let me take you towards the raw PDF for income statement. Simply go over here, click on quarters and go to the PDF. You will get the trend car PDF. Now, let's simply go to the income statement. Now, look at this. This is a standalone income statement, which means there are no subsidiaries consolidated in this income statement. This, is, this belongs only to the parent company of trend. Right. So we have 30th June 2025, 30th June 2024. This is your YOY comparison. This is your QOQ comparison. We always compare YOY in most industries. Right. Revenue from operation, this and this, grown, tick mark. Other income simply means that there are certain other operations which are running around the company and this is your other income. Now, I want every single one of you to understand that other income should not be growing faster than the revenue from operation. If the other income growth is faster or getting bigger every single year, then it's a red flag. Expenses, all of these are your, all of the expenses are grouped over here, right? If you are a CFA aspirant, you realize that we ex uh, group the expenses accordingly, right? By nature or by expense, right? We have purchase of stock in trade. Simply it means company has purchased already made raw material, right? Already made clothes or maybe something else. Changes in inventory. So this is your inventory where the company has used inventory. Employee benefit expenses, operating expenses. So these are your raw material, these two. This is your operating expense. Depreciation expenses are, and this is your fixed asset heaviness. Finance cost is simply your, once again, capital expenses. Occupancy cost, once again, operational expenses and other expenses. So all the types of expenses have been grouped here. Right. So you need to understand that every income statement will have a different structure and flow. But most Indian income statements are like this only. They do not separate the expenses according to their nature. They group the expenses. Right.
then we have your profit and loss before tax. And how do we calculate the EBITDA? Profit before tax plus interest plus depreciation gives you EBITDA. But you won't find EBITDA in any of these periods. Why? Because EBITDA is simply your non-generally accepted accounting principle or uh, accounting uh, measure. And nobody uses it in the accounting world. But as an analyst, we use it all the time. And companies also think that our EBITDA margin is this much. right? So we have your taxes and then your net profit. And then we have another section called other comprehensive income. Another income called as other comprehensive income. Other comprehensive income are simply those expenses, those income, which is not directly related to the company, but which bypasses the income statement and gets added back to the profit after tax. And simply your equity investments, all the equity investments that the company is holding, Remeasurement of defined benefit plan. These are these are your pension plans and income tax. So these are certain things which bypasses the income statement and get gets added back to the profit after tax. But this is not an important part of the income statement, right? Next up is your EPS, right? This is your paid up equity share capital. How much the company raised in equity capital, paid up debt capital, other equity none. We have your basic EPS and diluted EPS, right? So basic EPS simply means we are not accounting for the diluted, uh, diluted uh, equity shares in the company. Diluted means we have accounted for the securities which will dilute the EPS. In CFA level one, we study this, right? So all in all, this is your entire income stream. Now, how do we apply this? The only way to learn an income statement is to read income statement of hundreds of companies, right? My task for you, the task for you I'm giving you today is simply go on screener and analyze any company you want by simply downloading the raw PDF. And there is another way which you can use is simply your export to Excel tool, which I do not recommend to anyone, right? But once again, if we are in the field of equity research, we still have to open the Excel sooner or later, right? So understand one thing that you can use this statement. You can use the Excel sheet to analyze income statement. I will show you, right? Income statement, you have complete every single thing over there. We have common size analysis as well, right? And in common size analysis, you can simply see the income statements, entire structure, how much each thing as a percent of sales is there, right? So use this Excel sheet only when you have mastered the income statement basics, right? Only when you have complete confidence on yourself that you can master, you can read and analyze any income statement using raw PDF, then only use chat GPT and Excel. So this is it for the session, folks. I'll see you in the next session where we will discuss balance sheet and cash flow statement. So if you loved it, then please subscribe and thank you so much.